Good evening, good evening, brothers and sisters. Good evening to each of you. I'm Minister John Pickens with Revelational Ministries, and I would like to thank each of you for joining me on this Thursday evening for Bible study. Bless the name of the Lord tonight. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord, for his praise shall continually, continually be in our mouths today. It is always a blessing, brothers and sisters. It is always a blessing to be in and a part of the house of the Lord, to be here, to be considered amongst the living and not amongst the dead, for there is always something for us to be thankful for. Uh, there is always something for us to give God the glory, praise, and honor that he and only he so richly deserves. And when we learn to do this, brothers and sisters, he will come and make his home with us so that we can experience both his fullness and his wholeness. Bless his holy name today. Before I go any further, I always have to first start by giving honor to God and my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for saving me from my sins and commissioning me to preach his word, which is the gospel, which is the good news of Jesus Christ to his people all around the world. Bless his holy name today. Thank you to each of you uh, for taking the time out of your busy week to join us here for Bible study here on this Thursday night. Those of you who are in mourning and bereavement, we will continue, brothers and sisters, to pray for you and your family for healing, healing in the name of Jesus Christ. He is still in the miracle working business and he has not, brothers and sisters, closed up shop. Uh, many people believe he is no longer watching. Many people are losing faith, brothers and sisters, in the fact that he is still in control, regardless of the types of events that are happening around us, regardless who wins of the election, whether it's the right or the left. Uh, irrespective of that, brothers and sisters, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is still a man in control, and he wants us, brothers and sisters, to keep our eyes on him during these trying, trying times. Turn with me tonight to Revelation. Turn to me tonight to Revelation chapter 12. We're going to look uh, at verses 13 through 17. That's Revelation chapter 12, verses 13 through 17. And here, brothers and sisters, we are uh, concluding chapter 12 of Revelation. Uh, we have been methodically going through this piece by piece in terms of what's taking place with the woman, the child, and the dragon. Now we are at the conclusion, brothers and sisters, of this particular passage, but not at the conclusion of the story. Uh, there are still much, brothers and sisters, to unfold uh, as it continues to unfold right now before our very eyes. So there we will find verse 13. Now, when the dragon saw that he had been cast to earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That is Revelation chapter 12, verse 13 through 17. May the Lord bless both the hearers and doers of his word. Amen. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you today, Heavenly Father, to tell you thank you. We want to tell you thank you, Heavenly Father, for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father. Uh, we want to thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord God, for protecting us from all hurt, harm, and danger, the seen and the unseen. For none of us would be here today, Heavenly Father, without you. None of us would be here today, Heavenly Father, had it not been for what you have done on the cross for us. So we thank you today. We thank you today for your word. We, As we pray that our hearts, minds, and ears are open to hearing what the Spirit is saying to the seven churches. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you all again for joining us here for the word of God. Let us take our minds off of everything and everyone and let us place it now on Jesus Christ. So we have been discussing dominion, brothers and sisters. 
We have been discussing dominion, what it means, um, its origins, <clears throat> and what context is taking place in terms of the war that has been taking place in heaven and now is continuing down here on earth. So we started, brothers and sisters, by watching a sign, um, reading and observing the sign that was given by the Lord to the apostle John. Now, John saw a great sign in heaven, <clears throat> a woman who appeared clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and the 12 garland or the 12 stars uh, that were on her head like garland. So brothers and sisters, many speculate and try to find out the identity of who the woman is. There are those who believe that the woman perhaps represents the church. Uh, there are those who believe that perhaps the woman represents Israel. Either way, brothers and sisters, a woman represents a container. Uh, she contains, she uh, has, brothers and sisters, on the inside of her, uh, the ability to bring forth. And to a larger context, uh, brothers and sisters, we as all children of Christ have the ability to bring forth, not physical children, uh, but you bring forth fruit into this world, whether good fruit or bad fruit. But nonetheless, uh, nonetheless, in context with tonight's scripture, she is carrying, she is carrying brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ. Uh, she's carrying the child, which is the chosen one. And the enemy knows, brothers and sisters, the enemy knows that this child is his demise. Uh, because if you turn back to the book of Genesis, the Lord said that the seed of the woman is going to crush the head of the serpent. So the enemy knew from the beginning uh, that this child, brothers and sisters, was going to be his end. Now, he did not know exactly which woman was going to uh, was going to bring forth the child. But he knew, brothers and sisters, that the Hebrew people, he knew that the Israelites, the Jews, they were going to be the ones who bring forth uh, the child that was going to crush his head. Now, since he didn't know specifically who that was going to be in terms of the mother and the father, he has brothers and sisters become a typology. So just as he is referred to as the serpent in the garden, uh, the Bible also, brothers and sisters, insinuates uh, that the Nimrods, the Pharaohs, uh, the Nebuchadnezzars, uh, the Herods, the Caesars, uh, that many, many wicked leaders and wicked kings, those who were in charge, have uh, essentially, birth, uh, brothers and sisters, been working in tandem with the enemy. The enemy will use them as vessels uh, to kill millions of children. Uh, we saw this happen specifically, as we mentioned, brothers and sisters, in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 2, verse 13 through 18, where Herod wanted to kill all of the newborn and infant male children. You see, Many of us don't like to look at ourselves in terms of roles or what roles genders particularly play. And we're not getting into the politics of that, of, of whether that's good or bad. But what we can talk about, brothers and sisters, is how a woman is symbolized in the word of God and how a male child is symbolized in the, well, the word of God. Typically, a woman oftentimes is going to be referred to as a container. Uh, which means, brothers and sisters, she uh, must be guarded and protected because of the contents uh, that she is withholding. Also, brothers and sisters, whenever you see a male child being referenced, it's not simply talking about just gender. It's referring to a leader uh, that is going to be born, a standard bearer, a flag bearer uh, that is going to lead a movement. So the woman, brothers and sisters, is going to be carrying the male child. The male child in this instance we know is Jesus Christ. Now, since the enemy didn't know the identity of the child, he's going to send out brothers and sisters, as the Bible says, a flood, a torrent, a raging wave of assault, of assault after assault. Uh, have you ever felt that your people, that you or your family, uh, that they are enduring or have endured insult, assault after assault after assault. The enemy was relentless. Well, brothers and sisters, there is a reason for that. The enemy does not want leaders or containers or anything else coming out of your lineage. Uh, the enemy does not want, brothers and sisters, as we are going to get into the testimony of Jesus Christ coming forward. So our scripture day starts us now uh, at the conclusion, brothers and sisters, of Michael uh, and his angels winning brothers and sisters in heaven, casting out the enemy now who is not gone. The Bible says he's very close. The Bible says right here, we can back up to verse 12. 
Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell on the earth in them. But woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows he has a short time. Brothers and sisters, scripture says that the enemy, uh, the adversary has been uh, the accuser of the people, constantly going back and forth, finding wrongdoing in them, constantly going back and forth to the father and constantly pointing uh, his finger at the father saying, look at what mankind is doing. Look at how mankind is sinning. Brothers and sisters, that had to be annoying because, first of all, the Lord already knows how he created every one of us. Uh, he already knows our faults. He knows them before we commit them. Uh, but to have someone constantly accusing brothers and sisters, this is why he doesn't want us getting caught up into that. He already knows our sins. What he's waiting for, brothers and sisters, is us to acknowledge that we are not perfect, uh, that he's waiting for us uh, to, to tell him uh, that we are not perfect, not to present ourselves down here as these bastions uh, of light. No, the light, brothers and sisters, that is on the inside of us, that little light of ours is Jesus Christ. Uh, so it is him who is on the inside. It is him who is on the indwelling. Now, the Bible says that once the enemy was cast down to earth, now that war, brothers and sisters, that, can st uh, that started in heaven continued down here on earth. So now we have the dragon saw that he had been cast down to earth. He persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. So he couldn't do anything, brothers and sisters, to the male child, because the Bible says here uh, that the child was caught up in Revelation 12 and 5. Uh, the child was caught up to God. So his mission down here on earth was finished. Uh, and the enemy thought that he was defeated when he was crucified. But it was not, brothers and sisters. In fact, he defeated death. He defeated death on the cross and took captivity captive. And the Bible says later, brothers and sisters, that in addition to taking captivity captive, Revelations 20, he is going to cast death and Hades into the fiery pit, uh, into the bottomless pit. So we have to understand that there's a lot riding, brothers and sisters, on this scenario. The enemy now uh, has run. He's running low on targets. So the main target that he wanted, brothers and sisters, was the male child. But he's not going to end there. The Bible says, but the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place. Now, for those who ascribe to the view that the woman represents Israel, uh, you will hearken back, brothers and sisters, to the book of Exodus, where uh, the Lord spoke uh, to his people, reminding them that, listen, um, wasn't an eye who mounted you up on eagle, eagle's wings uh, to carry you into the wilderness. He's referring to the persecution and prosecution uh, that they were going to uh, going through under the uh, slavery brothers and sisters of Pharaoh. Uh, they were under the rule of the Egyptians uh, for over 400 years. And the Lord saved them, delivered them, preserved them and protected them by lifting them up on eagle's wings. Now, there were people back in the days, and some still do, who believe that the, the eagle's wings of a great eagle is referring to a specific country of the United States or another country. Uh, but after years, brothers and sisters of study, we realized that uh, some of us realized that perhaps he's not referring to a specific nation, but he's referring to himself. Uh, what he did for them, uh, how he lifted them up, brothers and sisters, how he lifted them up out of their trouble and turmoil and save them. He sent them into the wilderness. Now, oftentimes we believe that the Lord, when we find ourselves in a place in our life where we are in a state of wilderness, we tend to believe that somehow that the Lord has forgotten us or uh, that we're being punished. Well, sometimes brothers and sisters, the Lord is protecting you. Sometimes he's protecting you by sending you into the wilderness uh, because the enemy oftentimes does not want to go there. Uh, many of your own earthly enemies don't want to go there. So the Lord will often send you a place that they don't want to go to protect you for time. And while you're there, he intends for us to learn certain things to draw closer to him. So now the Bible says here, brothers and sisters, uh, that the woman who gave birth to the male child, but the woman who had been given wings, two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, 
where she is nourished for a time, times, and a half of times from the presence of the serpent. So we know that this represents three and a half years. So the Bible is referencing here that during this tribulatory period, that another three and a half years is going to take place where Israel, brothers and sisters, uh, is going to be protected. Israel uh, being the carrier brought forth uh, the male child. But because of that, brothers and sisters, they are going to be persecuted. And they are, and they have been since uh, the beginning, brothers and sisters. Those who uh, were of this lineage have been persecuted from the beginning. And the dragon has been relentless, brothers and sisters, at doing this. Now, this particular vision is referring to the end times where that three and a half year period following the first three and a half years where the prophets are prophesying, uh, the seals are being broken, the trumpets are being blown. Once the seventh trumpet is blown, then, brothers and sisters, we're going to have that war in heaven down here. And then, brothers and sisters, the three and a half year great tribulatory period is going to take place. This is why when people always say, well, it can't get any worse than this. Um, I really caution by using those types of words, brothers and sisters, because it can always get worse. In fact, the Bible says in the end, yes, we win. But before that takes place, uh, the Lord refers to this as labor pains. There's going to be many, many rough days ahead. Now, the Bible says here, brothers and sisters, that she is going to be nourished. She is going to be nourished in the wilderness for a times and a times and a half a time. Now, in the deserts of wilderness, the Lord sustained his people um, not by riches and glory. He sustained his people on manna. He sustained his people on water from a rock. Um, he sustained his people, brothers and sisters, uh, with manna, which was bread from heaven, which they used to make cakes. Now, oftentimes when we are in that trying training period time of our life, uh, we oftentimes figuratively and literally want to eat steaks. Uh, we want to eat nice food. We want to eat and have uh, all the best relationships. We're gonna have, we want to have all of these things. But what we have to understand is while we are in this wilderness, the Lord is going to supernaturally sustain us, brothers and sisters. He's going to sustain you physically, uh, but he knows uh, more than we. Uh, that is the spirit man of a man that's the most important. Our spirits have to be fed during this particular time. It's not uh, simple intimacy uh, that's going to get us through. Uh, remember, bread man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And oftentimes we are deceived by believing that you have to have that special person in your own personal life. Yes, brothers and sisters, uh, the word of God says in the beginning that it's not good for man to be alone. But remember, everything in the Old Testament is fulfilled by Christ and Christ was tempted in these things. And he told the enemy, man shall not live by bread alone. So it's not simply the things that our physical body wants or needs uh, that's going to ultimately sustain us. Those things can only bring temporary senses of relief uh, when you are hungry uh, and you feed yourself. It's going to only temporarily meet that need. Uh, a person who is just in need of intimacy, if they have a relationship with someone that feels a temporary need. Uh, but when you look at depression, uh, when you look at anxiety, uh, when you look at paranoia, when you look at fear, uh, brothers and sisters, fear of the unknown. We are dealing right now in a nation and around the world and have been for years with a spirit of racism, uh, a spirit of xenophobia, fear of other people who are not like you. Brothers and sisters, those are not things that can be solved with physical needs. Uh, those are not things that can be solved with physical solutions. This is why it doesn't matter who you elect. You're still going to have the same fear you had the previous day. Why? Because we are relying on people. Uh, we're relying on physical things to feed our spiritual man. And it's not going to happen. Uh, the Bible says, put not thy faith and trust in princes. This is for the people of God. Uh, we know the world is going to be the world. Uh, but what he's looking at is his people. When are his people going to stop putting our faith and trust in the kind to save us and to lead us to better pastures? We only have one shepherd, brothers and sisters, and his name is Jesus Christ. And the shepherd is telling us you cannot fulfill all of the things that you need via your physical body, uh, via your emotions, 
uh, via your heart. The Bible says that your heart will lead you astray. So the body, brothers and sisters, is not going to be sustained simply with physical things. It is going to take spiritual things, uh, things only from the spirit of Almighty God. Uh, there are people who dabble in divination and they believe that those spiritual things are the things that are going to keep them going. Well, brothers and sisters, it's not. In fact, it's going to continue to compound with compound interest the things that you have to pay back. Remember, everything that we do in this world is going to cause some sort of reaction on our lives or the lives of someone else. So if we dabble in anything that we're trying to get power from spiritually, it's going to have a, re um, a ricochet, uh, a, a reverberating effect in our lives or those who are um, around us. The only thing that we can do, brothers and sisters, our only true power source is Jesus Christ. And he, brothers and sisters, has sent his Holy Spirit to empower us, to nourish us for a times, a times, and a half of a time. Now, the Bible said that she was sent into the wilderness to be protected from the serpent. Now, there are people who believe that when that time comes and the uh, Israel is persecuted once again, they are going to flee to a place called Petra. Petra is a rock formation in the mountains over in Israel uh, where they have gone before uh, to be protected from the enemy. Now, since people know where the location of Petra is on the map, they're trying to speculate how are they going to be protected if we already know where that place is. The Bible, brothers and sisters, says that the Lord supernaturally protected them. So he has ways of doing things that our technology can't reach. He has ways of doing things that the magicians of the world and the sorcerers cannot duplicate. Uh, just think back to Pharaoh's court. When Moses was sent there uh, to tell Pharaoh that the Lord said, let his people go. So he began to perform miracles and signs. Well, Pharaoh had his Egyptian magicians try to duplicate a couple of them. Uh, and the Lord, brothers and sisters, allows a bit of duplication just to strain people along to have them believe that they have some sort of real power. And that's what we get when we deal with sorcerers and, and people who use the, uh, the divination. They are allowed to do certain things uh, to let it seem as if, yes, they do have a connection of some sort to the spiritual world. And they may, uh, brothers and sisters, many things that are speaking to them are familiar spirits, though. Uh, this is why a person uh, who describes himself as some sort of fortune teller may have some ability to see certain things about you. But the question is, who are they getting that information from? Are they getting it from the Holy Spirit? Or are they getting it from familiar spirits? Uh, so are we talking to uh, the right things, brothers and sisters? Now, the Bible says the woman was sent into the wilderness to be protected from the serpent. The serpent whispered sweet nothings into the ears of Eve in the Garden of Eden. And then Adam listened as well by following and doing those instructions. So the enemy, brothers and sisters, here uh, is described backwards and forwards. If you if you if you pay attention carefully, uh, he's referred to as the dragon. He's referred to as the serpent. Now, why are they changing the names, brothers and sisters? Why is the name of the enemy being changed? Because the Lord wants us to know uh, the enemy is coming in disguise, brothers and sisters. Uh, the enemy is not going to be in some sort of package uh, that either always is going to be well received. Sometimes he's going to be in a very subtle package. Uh, the Bible also describes him as an angel of light, appearing as an angel of light. So we have to be very careful uh, with terms, uh, terms of titles, because those terms of titles don't always tell you about the real person holding such title. Now, verse 15 says, so the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman. Now, everything the enemy does, brothers and sisters, is going to try to be some sort of imitation of what the Most High has already done. Remember, he wants to be revered and worshipped like the Most High. And we know, brothers and sisters, in the book of Genesis, the Lord sent a flood, a flood to rid the world of, brothers and sisters, things uh, that were not in compliance with his original plan. All that were spared were Noah, uh, his family, and the two animals that he commanded Noah to bring on the ark. Now, the flood destroyed the world, brothers and sisters. And the Bible says here that the serpent spewed water out of his, excuse me, he spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman. 
that he may cause her to be carried away by the flood. We've seen this again in Matthew chapter 2, 13 through 18. We've seen this in Exodus chapter 1, 15 through 23, where Pharaoh ordered all the Hebrew male children to be killed. So uh, the enemy, brothers and sisters, was originally trying to destroy uh, the male child. He was originally trying to destroy uh, that who was going to be the flag bearer. So uh, we have the child bearer, uh, but the enemy was trying to destroy the flag bearer. So he's trying to destroy the whole family unit. Many people are saying, well, the enemy is after the women. The enemy is after the man. The enemy is after all of it, brothers and sisters. He's after both halves because he knows that both have been created in the image and likeness of Almighty God. And while we continue, brothers and sisters, to bicker over who's the most important one, over who's been the most uh, you know, sought after or whatnot, we're missing the big point. We're missing the big picture that the enemy wants everybody destroyed, every single person destroyed, those whom he can't destroy. He wants to manipulate. He wants to manipulate. And his favorite target, as we're going to see, brothers and sisters, are those who carry the testimony. You see, if he can get to the people who, brothers and sisters, are saved, he wants to get on the ark. Uh, it's very interesting that out of all the creatures, brothers and sisters, that Noah was commanded to bring on the ark, uh, I don't remember at least it being written. Uh, that he was commanded to bring any of the serpents on the ark. And now they were, they were existing brothers and sisters. Could they have? It's possible. Uh, but nonetheless, brothers and sisters, we have to understand that we, brothers and sisters, are not to bring uh, the deceiver with us into our households. We're not to bring the deceiver and the deceiving messages, the dividing messages on the inside of the church. There's enough of that out here anyway. Uh, we don't come and congregate, brothers and sisters, on a Sunday morning or a Tuesday night or a Thursday night to bicker and to argue and to complain over the role of the male and the woman. We uh, should have enough of that already. Look at what it has produced into the world. Why can't there be a place where we go to pray? The Lord said that his house, his house is meant to be a house of prayer, not an entertainment center. Not a center of business and commerce. It's supposed to be, brothers and sisters, a house of prayer. So we have here, brothers and sisters, uh, that the Bible says the woman was being led into the wilderness to be protected from the serpent. Uh, but the serpent, brothers and sisters, is going to cause uh, water uh, to come out of his mouth like a flood. Now, it's very interesting that he was cast down, brothers and sisters, as the dragon. But now down here on earth, he is referred to as the serpent. Uh, the serpent, brothers and sisters, is the still the most subtlest out of all the creatures in the wild. Uh, the, the serpent is going to slide on in. This is why we have to be very careful. Uh, the book of Daniel says, brothers and sisters, that the son of perdition uh, is going to come forward, confirm a covenant with many. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians, where the Apostle Paul is comforting those who believe that the rapture had already occurred. He said it hadn't occurred yet. He said, listen, once the son of perdition is revealed, then the time is going to come. So we have to understand many people say, well, ignore everything what's going on politically. It doesn't matter who take power in the end. Well, the Bible says, brothers and sisters, that the son of perdition is going to be revealed. Now, he's not going to announce himself on national television. Uh, no matter what uh, nation you are dealing with. Uh, but it is up to the people to stay, brothers and sisters, apprised. It is up to his people uh, because it's our job to warn others. Would you want your meteorologist being asleep while we're in hurricane season? Uh, would you want your police officers to stay home when they get a call from 911 dispatch? Would you want your doctors who work in the ICU room to be on television break, meal break, uh, while there are patients flying in and out of there. Brothers and sisters, we have to understand we have been commissioned uh, to be brothers and sisters uh, sitting along the watchtower. We're not sitting down doing nothing. We're carrying forth his work. Uh, you're helping to feed the, uh, the the hungry and clothe the naked. You're doing his work, but our eyes are on him. Uh, we're not simply just called to be occupied with those things. He has called us, brothers and sisters, to be watching for him. Uh, the virgins who are watching for the bridegroom, they're watching and listening. Uh, they're not waiting for another sign in terms of a miracle to happen. They're waiting, brothers and sisters, to see what he is telling them uh, in the spiritual realm. And the word of God is here to, re uh, to remind us that when the son of perdition comes, brothers and sisters, when he is revealed, then we know. 
then we know time is moving closer and closer. But the Bible says here that the flood uh, was caused and brought about by the serpent. Uh, but the earth, the earth helped the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Notice the usage of language. The word of God is very particular, brothers and sisters. So it's going back and forth between the personas of the serpent and the dragon, the serpent and the dragon. He wants us to be aware, brothers and sisters, that uh, the enemy is still around. Uh, the enemy is still around. Now, he is not omnipresent like the Holy Spirit. So he has to have a vessel. Uh, he has to have a vessel. He's very particular about the vessel that he chooses. He's not going to just choose anyone. He'll send one of his uh, demons, one of his fallen ones with uh, him. He'll send one of them to inhabit uh, someone or a terrorist or someone. But he himself is very particular about the vessel that he is going to use. Now, and the dragon brothers and sisters sent out this flood, uh, this uh, this rage, brothers and sisters, that was meant to destroy her because he knows that if he can destroy her, brothers and sisters, she can destroy any other flag bearers, any other witnesses, any other preachers and children. He can destroy anything else that comes from the woman if he can get brothers and sisters to her via his flood. Now, again, what does this signify that we are after? Well, brothers and sisters, there was the war in heaven. And now there was the war on earth. If you look at the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12, it tells us specifically, we are warring, but we are warring not with flesh and blood. That means the war that you see between white and black brothers and sisters is not the real war. Uh, the war that you see happening between male and female, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, the war that you see happening, brothers and sisters, between male and female is not the real war. Uh, the real war, brothers and sisters, is what is taking place in the spiritual realm. And why, brothers and sisters, we are not able to effectively deal with this is because we are fighting with the wrong weapons. We fight at the ballot box. Yes, you're going to vote for whoever you're going to vote for. But understand, the ballot box is not going to save you. Uh, the political parties cannot save you. The political parties cannot end this conflict on earth uh, because it is not ultimately the source of it. It's a byproduct of it. Uh, it is a byproduct of our division, not the source of it. The source, brothers and sisters, goes back to the spiritual realm. It's this war that is still raging on between the enemy, brothers and sisters, and the people of God. Now, you're going to say, well, Brother John, I thought that Michael and the, his angels had already defeated the dragon. Yes. In heaven. And now Michael, according to the book of Daniel, chapter 12, he is assigned as the prince uh, over Israel, meaning he's watching over them. So their battle, their particular war, brothers and sisters, has been over. But ours is now continuing. And how do we know that? Well, verse 17 tells us, and the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. So he couldn't get to the male child. He couldn't get to the male child. And next, he couldn't get to the woman. Why? Because she was being protected. Remember, the early vision that John saw the woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet. That means this is the presence of almighty brothers and sisters over her, covering her, protecting, providing. We're so confused and arguing over whether men or whoever should be providing. Brothers and sisters, our heavenly father provides for us. It is our heavenly father who protects us. He has been doing this from the very beginning. This is why he tells us you should have no other God before him. Uh, no man, no woman, no political leader, no amount of wealth, nothing brothers and sisters comes before the most high because it is him that sustains us. Let me ask you a question. Which among you woke yourself up this morning, uh, told your heart to continue beating, told your nervous system to continue functioning and told your digestive system uh, to continue digesting food. I'll wait. None of us did, brothers and sisters. Our systems that doctors classify as automatic systems are not automatic. Guess who uh, controls them? Guess who turns them on and off? It is the most high. It is him, brothers and sisters, that sustains us. Uh, the Bible said it is the spirit of of a man on the inside that sustains him. Our spirit is only going to be sustained with the Holy Spirit, not our ambitions, not our gender, not our pride. 
Speaking of pride, brothers and sisters, turn with me to the book of 2 Chronicles. Turn with me to the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 26. And there we will find the story of King Uzziah. Now, I've spoken about this before, uh, but it's worth mentioning, brothers and sisters, because of the time we are dealing with. Remember, the enemy was cast down out of heaven because of pride. Pride, brothers and sisters, always precedes the fall. Um, and those who usually get the worst fall are those who have been given much. To whom much is given, much is required. So Second Chronicles chapter 26, we're going to look at verses 1 through 8 first. Now, all of the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king instead of his father Amaziah. So he built Elath, restored it to Judah, after the king rested with his fathers. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king, a very, very young king. And he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jeholiah of Israel. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. He had a 52 year reign, brothers and sisters, of success, doing what was right in the Lord, who started when he was 16. This is why people say, well, you know, Brother John, I was only you know, this age or that age, brothers and sisters, the Lord has faithful and unfaithful people at all different types of ages. So it really just depends on us whether or not we want to hearken unto his voice. Now, the Bible says he started out, he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. He sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding of the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. If you want to prosper, brothers and sisters, in this day and age, not talking simply about the things in the world, if you want to be productive, if you want to prosper, we have to follow, brothers and sisters, the laws and commandments of the Lord. It's just that simple. Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect at it. He is looking at our hearts. Many are caught up in the things that we did in the past. Brothers and sisters, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It doesn't say that Uzziah was a perfect person. Uh, but he knows, brothers and sisters, where our true intent is. And if it were not possible, he said he would not have told us. So he's saying that there is a way to be prosperous. He tells the children, children, remember the day, uh, remember our creator in the days of our youth. It is so that we have a foundation up under us so that once we begin to move forward in life, we too can prosper. Now, he went out and made war against the Philistines and broke down the wall of Gap and the wall of Jebniah, and the wall of Ashdod. And he built cities around Ashdod and among the Philistines. God helped him, <coughs> excuse me, God helped him against the Philistines, against the Arabians who lived in Ger, Baal, and against the Mennonites. Also, the Ammonites brought tribute to Uzziah. His fame spread as far as the entrance of Egypt, for he became exceedingly strong. Brothers and sisters, this was a man who was very prosperous. He uh, accomplished quite a bit. Uh, amazing feats, amazing military defeats. He reigned for 52 years in Jerusalem. Now, it would appear that, brothers and sisters, what more could a man want? What more could a king want at this particular time when even his enemies? The Bible says that also the Ammonites brought tribute to him. His enemies praised him. Brothers and sisters, we should be getting... Uh, some sort of recollection to what we discussed last week about pride. When we sometimes have too much, brothers and sisters, not every single time, but oftentimes when we have too much, we forget how we got there. Uh, we forget, brothers and sisters, who placed us there. We forget, brothers and sisters, who is our sustainer? Who is it that saved us? Uh, we look, brothers and sisters, uh, back in Revelation where it says that Michael and his angels were able to be overcome by the word of their testimony. Too many people think that this only means their own personal testimony, uh, what the Lord saved them from and, and, and how many things that they've done. That's not what he's talking about, brothers and sisters. He's ultimately talking about the word and the, the testimony of Jesus Christ. He wants every single man, woman, and child on this planet to hearken unto him and to his testimony. Uh, we were not saved, brothers and sisters, simply by our own biography. Our own bios are very, very important, but that's not what saved us. What saved us is the biography of Jesus Christ, uh, his life, 
his death, his resurrection, and his return. That is the revelation of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. He is our salvation. He is the source of our salvation. And he wants us to know as we look at King Uzziah here, King Uzziah, brothers and sisters, uh, didn't realize that uh, or continue to accept that it's the most high and his ways of doing things that is what made him prosper. It wasn't the fact that you were just special and highly anointed. It was the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, that uh, gave us success. It is the Holy Spirit that sustains us. So now we're going to see what takes place with Uzziah because of pride. So if you look over at verse 16, 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 16. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up. Just that right there alone, brothers and sisters, should take us back to Isaiah, what we were talking about, Isaiah chapter 14, where the enemy in heaven, his heart was lifted up, brothers and sisters. The book of Ezekiel chapter 28 says that the king of Tyree, uh, which many believe that he's also referencing the enemy and his fall in heaven, his heart was lifted up. He was created perfect in terms of his image uh, compared to the others uh, with all sorts of jewels, brothers and sisters all sorts of anointing. He was anointed to walk amongst fiery stones. The Lord is saying, listen, those of you who have been blessed beyond measure, uh, you are lifted up. Your heart is lifted up. Why? Because you have forgotten why you are what you are. So the Bible says his heart was lifted up to his destruction. Uh, many people are trying to have a race to the top. They want to be the top of the corporation. They want to be the top of the congregation. But what they don't really realize is they're, uh, and unless you are basically uh, carrying forth the word of God and he promotes you, uh, the Bible says that your heart is lifted up to destruction. So you're going to climb all the way to the top of the corporate ladder by ruthless tactics and being deceitful and deceitful only to find yourself finding that it is a long way down. For he transgressed against the Lord, his God, by entering the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Now, incense represents the prayers, the prayers of the people that will go up, brothers and sisters, before the throne of God, before his altar. Now, since then, the Lord has always divided the power. We, we talk about the separations of power, uh, the three branches of government in the United States, how we have power shared between the executive branch, the legislative branch, and the judicial branch. The whole purpose was to divide the power up uh, so that you wouldn't have a tyrannical king or person in charge the powers of the purse, the powers of the courts, all of these things would be evenly distributed. Well, how many of us realize that we didn't create that concept? That concept, like many others, brothers and sisters, originated with the Most High. So he said, listen, he had a king designated who was going to look after the political and military affairs of Israel. But then he's also going to have his priests. See, originally he had it in one position. Uh, through Moses and the judges, they were going to be both king and priest. Uh, but over the course of time, the people said, well, we want a king. We want somebody separate uh, that we can go to and bow down to, uh, literally, and worship. That was the whole point that people wanted. Uh, you see, brothers and sisters, there was not going to be worshiping the priest because the priest uh, worked on behalf of the Most High. But the people weren't satisfied with that. So they wanted a king. They wanted somebody that they could go worship. So the Lord told Samuel, go ahead. Uh, go ahead and anoint Saul. And since then, they had been given kings. Now, the powers of separation were divided between king and priest. So here, brothers and sisters, the king is responsible for the political affairs, the military affairs, whereas the priest is responsible, brothers and sisters, for the house of God. The priest is the, uh, the intermediary between the people and the Most High. That's his job. Uh, to run the incense. It's his job to run the temple. It's his job uh, to submit the prayers, the incense before the Lord. So Azariah the priest went in after him, went in after the king. This is the king walking inside. There's nothing said that he couldn't go visit them, but he couldn't go, brothers and sisters, into the holy place to perform their function. Uh, how many of you realize, no matter how important you are, he has certain functions designated for certain types of people. This is what we were talking about as it pertains to the woman and the male child. It's not about one being more important than the other one. We, we get so caught up in that and determining who's the most important one instead of realizing they have specific focuses. He has, uh, everybody's not going to do everything. 
The Lord is going to have things divided because he, brothers and sisters, is a God of order. He does things particular ways. So here we have the king, brothers and sisters, overstepping his domain, his dominion, going inside to the dominion of the priest. The judge, brothers and sisters, has his dominion in the courthouse. The police officer has his dominion on the street corner. Uh, the prosecutor, the defense attorney, has their domain where they are. But too often times we don't understand this. We want to cross over into somebody else's domain instead of realizing this is the way the Lord has it set aside. So Azaria the priest runs in after him. He runs in after him because he understands the implications of what's going to go on. Whereas you don't see uh, Azaria the priest going into the, uh, the palace to sit on the king's throne to do his job. No. So we have to understand, brothers and sisters, there is a way, a designated way the Lord has things set up. So he went in and with him, 80 priests of the Lord, valid men. So these were faithful, valid men who were following behind him saying, what are you doing? Get out of the temple. Because remember, they are charged with keeping it. So they can't allow just anybody and anyone to come in there. Now, if we contrast to what's happening in to today's time, too many times, brothers and sisters, we uh, as uh, pastors and leaders and ministers, we are allowing all sorts of business folk, political folk to come inside the church uh, to take hold of the pulpits, uh, to take hold and speak to the people. Brothers and sisters, uh, he has designated his place. The bully pulpit is for the president. The bully pulpit is for the political leaders. His pulpit in his house are for those whom he designates to be there. It is not our job to sublease it out to other people. Uh, we should have learned from the Garden of Eden. Do not sublease out your dominion. Uh, that dominion that the Lord has given you is supposed to be for you. Now, the Lord has sent uh, or Azaria and these 80 priests are running after him saying, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be here doing that. And they withstood King Uzziah and said to him, it is not for you, o Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense. Sometimes we understand, brothers and sisters, we're confusing the law. OK, meaning that which what Jesus Christ has saved us from from procedure, uh, law and procedure is not always the exact same thing. Procedure, brothers and sisters, is something that the Lord has set in place in terms of instructions, ways things should be done. The priest's job is to burn the incense. The pastors, the ministers, the evangelists, evangelists is their job to be in the pulpit of the church, witnessing on behalf of the Most High. That's not a place for political leaders, not a place for business leaders, but the people who are going to do that, brothers and sisters, are going to understand they're allowing the enemy slowly to creep on the inside. And it says here that they told him, it is not for you to do this any more, more or less than is their job to be in the palace commanding the military what to do or commanding the treasury of the nation. That's not the job of the priest. So the understandingly, we thought it was Thomas Jefferson who came up with the concept of separation of church and state. But it wasn't, brothers and sisters. The Most High wants us to understand he had a designated role for the king. He had a designated role for the priest. Get out of the sanctuary for you have trespassed. You shall have no honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah became furious because he's the king. He's in charge. Nobody should be able to tell him what to do. And he had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was angry with the priests, leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priests in the house of the Lord beside the incense altar. Where he committed the infraction, brothers and sisters, that is where the punishment happened. Oftentimes we think that these things are going to take place 10, 15, 20 years from now. Mm -mm. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, the punishment is going to take place right at the spot of the infraction. And Azariah and the chief priests and all the priests looked at him, and there on his forehead he was leprous. So they thrust him out of that place, because leprous is very contagious, brothers and sisters, highly contagious. Indeed, he also hurried to get out because the Lord had struck him, and he remained a leper until the day he died, brothers and sisters. Pride cometh before the fall. We must understand that the war in heaven that was fought. Because the enemy, brothers and sisters, wanted to exalt himself. Uh, because the enemy wanted to exalt himself in the midst of the congregation, at the highest point in the congregation. Because the enemy wanted to exalt himself to be like the Most High. 
pride came before his fall. And now that he is down here on earth, the war on earth is continuing. And he, brothers and sisters, uh, couldn't get to the woman. He couldn't do anything to her. He couldn't do anything, brothers and sisters, to uh, the, the child, the male child, Jesus Christ, who now has ascended. So the Bible says here in Revelation 17, now he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So we have gone from an evolution to describing the woman, many believe as Israel, the carrier brothers and sister of the male child. Since he couldn't ultimately destroy Israel or the male child, now brothers and sisters, he is going to turn his attention to the offspring. Who are the offspring? Are the offspring referring to skin color? Is the offspring referring to denomination? Is the offspring referring to religion? The offspring, brothers and sisters, says those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So it didn't say anything about white folks, black folks, Hispanic folks. It didn't say anything about Muslims, Christians, Jews. Those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Christ Jesus. Not the testimony of your favorite author, not the testimony of your favorite preacher, the testimony of Jesus Christ. That is the testimony by which we all have overcome. Uh, many people were saying, well, isn't it important that we know uh, the story and the background of all of these people? Uh, brothers and sisters, there is merit, some merit to understanding, right, what people have gone through. But understand this, that's not what's going to save us. Nothing we have done down here <clears throat> or can do is going to save us. It's because of what Christ did. Is because of what Christ did. If we look at the book of Galatians, the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, 27, 28, and 29. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. Why are we still warring, brothers and sisters, about who is the most important, male or female? The Bible in the book of Genesis tells us he created them male and female in his image and his likeness. Why war about your gender roles, brothers and sisters? Why? The only role we need to be concerned about is the role that Jesus Christ plays or does not play in your life. That's what we need to be discussing. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Not are you male or female, because that doesn't matter anymore. Many of us are wondering about our identities. That don't matter anymore, brothers and sisters. That was taken to the cross uh, when Jesus went there, brothers and sisters. He wants us to know now that we are neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Anybody telling you something different, telling you that all of those other things do matter, you know who they are speaking on behalf. Because remember, the war down here on earth is a little different than the war that took place in heaven. The war down here, brothers and sisters, is taking place spiritually. Spiritualism, brothers and sisters, uh, is uh, a representative of information. This is a war of information. So it's a war of messaging. You hear this all the time. Well, the political campaign didn't get through because they didn't have the right message. Brothers and sisters, the message of Christ Jesus is not to continue to divide yourself over who uh, is trying to be higher than the next person, over your identity, worrying about all of these cultural heritage uh, things that people have been bickering about for years. Who's the true 12 tribes of Israel? Uh, how many people in the Bible were of a certain skin tone? Brothers and sisters, these things do not matter. It says all are one in Christ Jesus. Verse 29, if you are Christ, it's interesting where the word of God says, if it's putting a condition on things because uh, even here, the Apostle Paul, all of the, the disciples and apostles, they know everyone on this earth does not want to receive the testimony of Jesus Christ. They may be, quote unquote, good people in their eyes. But the Bible says who is good. Uh, Jesus said that none is good but the Lord, brothers and sisters, but the father in heaven. So if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. 
and didn't say anything about because you were born with the blood level of a tribe, uh, because you were born in the tribe of Reuben or the tribe of Simeon. Those things are not going to save you any longer, brothers and sisters. Many people are still lo looking and focusing on the old code. Uh, many people believe that you're saved because your mother and father are pastors. Uh, you have your relationship with the Lord because you come from a very rich and well-off family. That's not what the word of God says. Uh, if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed, brothers and sisters. Many people believe that simply because they are born in particular groups of religious families. Somehow that transfers over to them. No, brothers and sisters, the standard has changed. The covenant has changed. If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. When a child inherits millions of dollars from their parents and they not are able to receive that money until they reach the age of maturity, in this case, oftentimes it's 21. It may be 18, but oftentimes it's 21. Sometimes it's older. They're only going to receive that inheritance at a particular time. Do you think it would be wise for that child, brothers and sisters, to forfeit that inheritance simply because they don't see it right now, to forfeit that inheritance for something that else that they see on earth? No. Why, brothers and sisters, are we forfeiting our inheritance? You may not have any money right now. You may not have two pennies to rub together. But the Bible says if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Well, what are we heirs to? Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ says all authority has been given to him in heaven and on earth. Uh, remember, at the very beginning, the Lord, the most high created the earth, gave dominion of it to the man and the woman. Well, brothers and sisters, Christ Jesus uh, has all the power now. And he, when he reestablishes his kingdom, he says he is going to give according to all, according to their works. So he is going to give us, brothers and sisters, new dominion. But we are not going to be able to handle it, first of all, if uh, you are not in Christ Jesus. So if you are here tonight and you do not have a relationship with Christ Jesus, you can have one. All you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If you do that, brothers and sisters, and you truly mean it and believe it, then as the word of God says, then you are now the seed of Abraham, heirs to the promise. Now, because you have this heritage in you, this makes you, brothers and sisters, a very dangerous individual. Now, you may be saying, well, Brother John, I'm not a dangerous individual. I wouldn't hurt a fly. Uh, I wouldn't do this to someone. I wouldn't do that to someone. No, that's not what I'm saying. You are dangerous to the enemy. The Bible says here again, he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have his testimony because he does not want you, brothers and sisters, inheriting the inheritance that the Most High has already decreed for us through his son, Jesus Christ. And if you already have that relationship with the Lord, don't give it up. Don't give it up for the things of this world. Don't give up, brothers and sisters, your eternal heritage for foolishness that's down here on earth. Uh, do not give up your eternal heritage, brothers and sisters, for division and the things of this world that are all going to fade and pass away. Your identity that you are trying to uh, have down here, that's going to fade away. Uh, the culture of people that you are fighting desperately to preserve, that is going to fade away. The only thing that remains forevermore is the Lord, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining me for the word of God tonight. We pray uh, that he continue, brothers and sisters, as he always has and always will keep us covered and protected in this day and age. Thank you all for joining me for the word of God. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, tonight for this word. We thank you, Heavenly Father, tonight for this message. Uh, this message that this war on earth is continuing. But that we, Heavenly Father, who have the testimony of Christ Jesus, we pray that we keep our mind and faith and trust on you. Not on the people of this world, because they cannot save us. Uh, we know that only you have and only you can. So we thank you tonight, Heavenly Father, for salvation through you. Amen. For redemption through you. Uh, for peace and prosperity through you. In the name that is above every name, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you. Thank you for all of you joining me for tonight. Please stay with us as we continue uh, to look at this uh, series because this is very important moving forward to understand that things now have transcribed from heaven down here on earth. But please follow us on Tuesdays. Join us Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. for intercessory prayer. Join us Thursday nights at 8 p.m. for Bible study. 
and join us on Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. for Brothers and Sisters of the Word of God. I am Minister John Pickens with Revelational Ministries. Please follow us on Facebook and YouTube for additional biblical and Word of God content. Amen. Thank you to all of you. Have a very blessed night and a blessed, safe rest of the week. Amen.